Akash Kuchar. I am the Director of Marketing and Sales here at Shawami. Thank you for joining us. This is a Shawami sponsored uh, webinar. We are a on-demand showing agent service, but we're looking to give back to the community through education. And today I am joined by Jessica Peterson and Gary Barnes. They are both incredible human beings who have achieved absolute success and want to share a little bit more about what the secrets were to getting there. Um, they both have a very, very great background, um, and I'm so excited to be talking with both of them. And this is not a real estate specific um, conversation. So, okay. So here, as it mentions, I'm a best-selling author. I've actually wrote seven books, best-selling multiple times. I'm a certified business and life coach, an icon real estate agent, a TEDx speaker, a six and seven figure trainer and advisor to firms who want to sell. So that pretty much summarizes me on a business level. Um, I also on a personal level, been married 25 years and I have a daughter after being told I can never have children. Well, hello everyone. And I'm Gary Burns. I, I'm a number one international best-selling author and credited now with 10 books. Uh, by the way, I hate writing. Uh, I'd much rather be speaking. Uh, I've spoken all of my books. Uh, I'm a high-performance business and sales strategist, also a TEDx speaker, and I'm a drummer and a police academy grad. Um, you know, I've been building businesses my uh, pretty much my entire life. I'm a serial entrepreneur. And because of that, you know, it, it's been an adjustment with different markets and different organizations. But um, I, I have been married a little bit longer than Jessica. In June, it'll be 49 years. Um, I tell everybody I'm not old. I'm just older. <laughs> Wiser. So I'm going to go ahead and give an illustration while you're pulling that up, Josh. It's similar to building a house. Um, there's definitely a formula and a step-by-step -step process. And you really want to make sure that you have that blueprint and that solid foundation to get started with. If you don't have that blueprint, the step-by-step, -step, the house is just going to be a hot mess. And same with that solid foundation. So we're really happy to go ahead and share step-by-step -step what those are. Um, the first point through the whole process I want to bring out is something one of my friends who's a billionaire, and they shared that this was the secret to get what they want. Can you guess what that is, Josh, while you're going on a hunt for the presentation? <laughs> So I'm assuming that the secret to getting what you want is working hard towards your goals or working hard towards it. Is that, Gary is that and I, the right, <laughs> right move? Gary and I are smiling because um, I've, I've spoken on his stage and, and with him before, and he always says that's the number one biggest no-no, right, Gary? Oh, man. Well, absolutely. You know, if it was about working hard, then every steel worker and farmer in America should be a gazillionaire. That is a very valid point. So there's it's more, about working smarter? No, there's one more stage after that. It's working right. Ah. So everyone has a different journey. They're wanting different results, different goals. And so it's that customization and where Jessica is going to go is that there is one word that stimulates it all. And Jessica, what is that? It starts with this T and it's clarity. So without clarity on what you want, you're not gonna get what you want. And it really comes down to asking key questions as well. And as I mentioned, one of my friends who's a billionaire said this is their number one secret to success is clarity. And have you ever been there where you're with someone you're like, oh, let's go out to eat. Where do we want to go out to eat? I don't know. I feel any so long conversation. Next thing you know, you're all exhausted. Right? You don't even really know where you want to go to eat. Uh, but if you're very focused and clear on where you want to go, it's going to happen quicker and sooner. And with more motivation which I also had the privilege to sit in a mastermind with multi multimillionaires. And they said that the number one secret to success is motivation. So having that clarity, that focus and knowing that will increase your motivation. 
because without that clarity, it's exhausting and you're lost. And we'll definitely go ahead and discuss more of this. Well, and the more that we are out there and, you know, looking for the opportunities, we cannot do all of the opportunities all of the time. And so we can get uh, distracted. And also, you know, the, the concept of FOMO, fear of missing out. Well, if I do this, I can't do that. And what is it that is really important to you? And clarity allows you to engage in the most important and most valuable areas to get you the results that you're really wanting. The idea that, okay, let's, you know, step back. We can do 50 different things or we could do the one thing really well, but we've got to have that clarity. What is it that we actually wanted in the, the grand scheme of things? And as you said, fear of missing out, right? So this takes us to this slide. So, I mean, going back to Jessica's analogy of building a house. So you could go ahead and say, okay, I want to build the house and I'm going to build the roof. Well, do we need the roof before we lay the foundation? And we lay the foundation. Well, golly, I didn't want to do it there. I wanted to do it over here. So without that clarity, that that vision of, uh, what it is, the result that we're wanting at the end of the journey, then we can be wandering in the wilderness. And it, it does, like what Jessica said, it can be very frustrating and confusing and we just get pulled and we wear ourselves out. Mm -hmm. And this example of going on a trip, would you just hop in the car and start to go, I've done this. Did I have fun? Yes. But later on, when I come back, people say, did you go here and here? No, I didn't even look or research. I wasn't really clear on what I want to achieve. I just hopped in the car and went. So when you're clear on this is what I want to achieve, this is what I want to do. It's more fun and, and you achieve more. And, and also you could run out of gas if you just hop in the car and go on a trip, right? And same with our life. We can run out of that gas that um that motivation which you can't buy from anyone or anywhere and when we run out of gas we get tired we get exhausted in life and it's i call it that hamster on the wheel coffee in hand hair on fire chasing the next deal and then having a squirrel moment right and it's all over the place it's exhausting so it's really about having that clarity and that map to get you there where you want to go so what Gary and I wanted to do is we really wanted to ask some key questions and we challenge each of you to write these down and think about this. And with those th three key questions, it'll get you actually started. And some people know the answers right away and some don't, some struggle, and that's okay if you actually struggle. So Josh, you wanna go ahead and share those three questions up here for everyone to visually go ahead and see? Yep. So if you can have anything you want, what is it? And some people are scared. They're scared of fear of that's impossible. Um, I don't deserve it. Just write whatever comes to mind. And some people have stated to Gary and I, wow, I didn't even know that was something I wanted. It just came to my mind. The next question is what will be the steps to get there? And the third one is what can hold you back? That is a really big one for people to dive into. And that can be a really deep question as well. And this is just the starting, as Gary and I mentioned, building a house. This is just the starting point of starting to map this out throughout the process. You know, the interesting thing about these questions is that I have found after being uh, building businesses to a very high level over these years, is that 80% of success is psychological and emotional. These questions relate to that. 20% is tactical. But in the industries, it doesn't matter what the industry is as far as production, it's reversed. Everybody is teaching the tactical 80% and 20%. It's about staying in the game. And when you look at that third question, what can hold you back? That is not saying that somehow we're wrong or broke or you know somehow not good enough to do what it is that we're intending and wanting to do. It just means that there are things that have been instilled in us from a very early age that normally is a distraction and a mm -hmm. hindrance to get there. And so to understand what those are allows us to let things go. 
And also, if you can have anything you want, what is it? That can shift and change. I worked with a real estate agent. I coached her and, you know, she, she was not making hardly any money, didn't even have a house herself. And we went through this process. The next thing you know, she made, she goes, well, I want to make six figures. She did it. And then she wanted a house by this date. She got it. And then she wanted to go in celebrity world. She's now stepped into it. I mean, she sent me pictures of some big names. I'll, I will never say them out of respect. And so what's super cool about her though, is now she said, Jessica, I achieved what I wanted. Now here's what I want this year today. And it was completely different and she's going after it. And it's really exciting. So it can shift and change. And this is something to reevaluate throughout your life. Some people say, well, what I thought I wanted now change. And that can be scary. It's okay. Because what I always share, and Gary and I, we both have some pretty powerful stories. Um, my husband um, was in ICU. And after that, you look at life totally different as every day is perfect because it's a gift of life. So really go after what you want because it was given that burning um, purpose and passion for a reason. Well, and that's an important distinction, Jessica, because years ago I was racing Porsches on a closed track with Le Mans drivers. I mean, it was exciting. And I had at one point wanted to have a Lamborghini. And I, on my way home from one of those experiences, I realized I would never be able to drive that Lamborghini the way I did on the racetrack. And so what was it that I was really wanting? Was it the car or the experience? And allowing myself to have the experience without having a car to impress no one uh, it, it was a releasing and a freeing the same way with flying. I didn't want to pay for an airplane sitting on the tarmac, not in the air. So now I fly with others in the air, which is fine. I was looking for the re another result. I saw that, that sometimes we have to just put it out there as, oh, I want that airplane. I want that car. I want that house. I want whatever. And when you get there, you go, you know, there was something else beyond that. So we can adjust. As you're both kind of talking, it, it's it's important to always note that your goals will change throughout time. You know, what goals I had years ago, right? So I went through, a, you know, I'll, I'll stop sharing so that you guys can actually see my face. Um, so we, you know, for me and my goals changed over time, right? I my goal a long time ago was, okay, I need to just lose weight. And that was my number one focus. What's it going to take for me to get there? And, and now it's like, okay, now I'm at where I want it to be. Now I don't have the same goal as I used to. So now I need to adjust my goal and, and get clarity on where I need to move forward and what my next goals are going to be. So I definitely, I agree that over time, your goals, you have to be willing to adapt your goals to you. And where you are. And when you achieve something, reward yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up, Josh, because I have a whole training on how to even celebrate life. Uh, Gary and I working with high level ex you know, executives and professionals, they achieve so much and then they always forget to celebrate. If we could go back to the previous slide, though, Josh, I want to give an illustration about being specific. And actually this I encountered, um, I met this 14 year old. I love his you know, he has hustling spirit. He kept begging me to be a mentor in his life. He would not give up. And I said, okay, what is it you want to achieve? And he gave me four things. And one, he says, I want to make a lot of money. I want to be rich. Great. That's a great starting port point, but it's not very clear and specific because the more specific you are, the more likely it's going to happen because rich is very a broad term for every single person, you know, especially after working with, um, you know, some people may say, oh, well, that million dollar home is so luxury. Well, I've worked with billionaires where the cheapest home they bought was over 400 million, right? So it's all perception for each person. And here's a great specific example that Gary has created. Um, I received 100,000 uh, with 80,000 net revenue or more by December 15, 2023. It's precise. It's, and it's very direct. Well, and the idea here is it compares to what we would normally be, and most of us have been taught to use affirmations. 
And the challenge with most affirmations is literally we are lying to our subconscious where we say, I am rich. And then you look at your bank account and go, no, maybe not so much. And so what this is, I call them get statements. And the word get I have an acronym for is great expectations today. And so what it is, it's a future result stated in the present tense. And so now we're being pulled towards that result, not going to it. And they're designed in a very specific way for you to have that agreement within your subconscious, because most of the success that we have comes out of the subconscious. We see things that are already there. And if we don't program that subconscious to see it, we'll walk right by it. And the next slide is is very eye-opening. I don't know if a lot of people realize this, that our brain is just a deletion machine because we receive 200 billion trillion bits of information per second. So our brain, the only way it can function with this nonstop information, our brain starts canceling everything out except what is familiar, the things we see and experience on a regular basis. So anything and everything we need to manifest and desire is really all around us. Sometimes we just don't recognize it. We're just not seeing it because our brain keeps deleting it. We only are aware of what we already know. And as a part of this, Gary, as he mentioned, affirmations, it's not just an affirmation. It's not just saying it. There's a process to write these out every single day, these get statements. So once you have that clarity, asking key questions, and then there's a formula to write it, as we mentioned, being specific, you want to write this out every single day. And then it's going to bring to your more conscious being aware of these opportunities for you. Well, and if you take that 200 billion trillion bits of information that's coming in, the it transitions down to only 2,000 bits of information per second. So it basically ignores 99.999% of everything that you're bringing into your subconscious. So what it is that it pays attention to can be very deliberate. You can reprogram, reboot your brain for success, literally. So this is where we do get into the get statements. The, the get statements is there's three ways that we reprogram the subconscious. And that is where we take information in visually, auditorially, and kinesthetically. And like what Jessica just said, is writing out a get statement, like the one that was on the screen a couple of, uh, be, uh, a couple back, is that as you write that, you are seeing it. And you write it, it's kinesthetic. And when you see it on the piece of paper, if you're like most, you're actually speaking it to yourself. It doesn't have to be outside, you know, uh, out loud. It can just be within your your mind. And so what happens is that we are letting our subconscious know what we want to pay attention to. Now, something else that Jessica had on another screen that now you have to put action to it. This is not magic where you just put it out there and somehow magically it appears. But there's action steps, but you don't write those action steps out. But to be able to receive this, um, maybe it's doing X number of open houses. Maybe it's doing what are the things that are going to generate the probability of that end result. And so this goes also back to what Jessica had talked about at the very beginning, the clarity. What is it specifically that you're wanting? One of my, uh, I was speaking on a cruise a number of years ago to a number of or to a financial planning group. And one of the gentlemen, when I asked, what do you want? He said, I want a million dollars in the bank. And I asked, well, why? He said, well, it'll give me security. And I asked one more question. I go, will it? And he started to answer and it got stuck in his throat. And he looked at me and he goes, damn you. And he, it, it never occurred to him that there was something else beyond that. And so uh, two weeks later, he called me and hired me, right? We, we became great friends. But the thing is, if some of the things that we have on the list that we want to accomplish, they become so what? What is the so that? If we translate it to a so that, 
what it is that we're really wanting, then your get statements have power. They will actually give you what Jessica talked about, the motivation to get up and do the things that are uncomfortable. I mean, I, when I was in real estate, I was really good at stopping it for sale by owners and getting the listing. But it was the hardest thing for me to do. It was put my foot on the brake and go do it. Go knock on the door. But every time I did it, you know, odds are about 70% of the time I got the listing. So why did I have that resistance? Well, normally it was, I still didn't want to hear no. I didn't want to bother people. I didn't want to, you know, be that person that was, you know, just that consummate salesperson. So the things that we really want and we translate it to the so that, it gives us that permission to engage. And here I just challenge each of you today to just start writing, just start writing and just seeing what flows and comes out what you want. Um, sometimes it shocks people, sometimes it doesn't. And as I mentioned earlier, it may change. So I challenge each of you, just start writing out there. And what I want to share is a little bit of a bonus is something really fun. And the get statements are definitely a big part of the secret to get what you want. And then I also want to share with you about a digital dream big board. Some people also know it as vision board, although that's trademark. So I call it the digital dream big board. And you know, a lot of people say, well, I don't want to clip magazine clippings and get this board and then I travel and then I don't see it. So I'm going to challenge each of you to start taking images and to create a private board on Pinterest. And by doing so, then you start having what you want to get in front of you on your phone that you can reflect and look at in addition to the get statements to really inspire in that motivation. And that digital dream big board, if something doesn't feel or sit right, it's okay to delete it and add something else into it. And when Gary and I work with people and dive deeper into this, we dive into more questions to even be more specific what it is you want and more specific on what to put on that digital dream big board. A lot of people have said that they've never even thought about that possibility of putting something privately on Pinterest and to have that inspiration to look at every single day. Now, do you also kind of push them towards maybe even like desktop image, like a collage in your desktop of things that you're like, hey, my vision. But when you're when you're like sitting there going, OK, I, I've just logged into my computer and, and it can kind of push that motivation again, because, you know, if especially if your work is based on a computer, you might feel a little bit more motivated. Like you said, even with Pinterest, it's on your phone, you're going to somewhere with it. I like that aspect where if you're on vacation, but also when you're working, like the idea of your background is always going to be this collage of uh, a car, a house, uh, a stack of money, a dog, uh, you know, you name it, a boat, whatever your goal is or whatever you're looking to achieve is written there. But now do you, when you say these, when you have these images, you know, do you both kind of say, okay, put some text under it to specify saying, this wasn't just any car. This was the 1998 Lambo. This was the home that I saw on XYZ website that was worth 1.2 million. And I want to achieve this. In, and then you write the year next to it. Is that kind of where it goes? Or is it more along the lines of just having the image already is enough? The more specific that you make it, the better off you are. Uh, and I wanted to say this. For those of you that are thinking maybe this is a little too woo-woo or fluffy, uh, you don't have to think it's going to work for it to work. It's the weirdest thing. Um, a number of years ago, I was on at John Asraf's home uh, called Eagle's Nest. And I don't know if you guys know who John is, uh, but he was in The Secret and some of those other movies. And he owned the Century 21 franchise in middle America uh, years ago. And so when he was doing that, he found a picture of a home, put it on a vision board, and it was on the beach and all that. And he was in, um, moved to Canada and then moved to San Diego into La Jolla. And he got married and he had his stepson that was there. And he said, uh, what is in that tube? And he goes, oh, I haven't opened up this tube in years. And he pulled out the vision board. And there was a picture of a house that he wanted on that vision board that he was now living in. Mm. And he didn't realize that was the house that he bought. 
He had no concept that that was the house. And it's something that is very unique that happens with this. It's not magic, but it is more scientific than fluff. Because all we're doing is being very specific about what end result that we're wanting. And then, you know, if you say, well, I want a car. Well, do you want a, you know, the old Volkswagen thing or a Hugo or, you know, it's a car. Um, and then what kind and what type of wheels, what type of accessories, what color. Uh, as specific as you can make it, the better off it is because you can visualize it specifically with a get statement because as you write it out, you start seeing it. You start living it in the future presently. And I like how Gary brought that out. It, it, some people may think it's woo-woo. And as we mentioned, it's all scientific and the brain and the whole science behind that. So it's pretty powerful. I've had many customers say, wow, this is so freaky. It actually works. <laughs> they always say that. This is freaky, Jessica. This actually works. And I'm one of those people too. You know, I was very specific. I wanted a specific house by a specific time. And I wasn't getting it, wasn't getting it. And then all of a sudden it came and it, and it came that exact week. And I wrote this out a year and a half in advance. So it, um, it really does. It really does work. The subliminal messaging, seeing it over and over again and being reminded exactly why you put it there. Well, in essence, that's why billboards and bus benches work. You know, when we think about it and, you know, when we have the what I call the three keys for success in business. It allows us to engage in these three keys when we we have this clarity because now we have purpose. And so the first is to be seen. You know, we have been taught from young age is to, well, you know, for those of us that have children, the first thing we really wanted them to do is to walk and talk. And as soon as they did, we said, shut up and sit down. And we have been taught that, you know, be in line. And to be seen is something that if we're the best kept secret, if we're hiding in plain sight, then no one is going to be there to see that we are the solution to whatever that need is that they have. Mm. And so to be able to showcase ourselves in a way that is relevant, and we lost Jessica, uh, in, in a way that allows us to be what I call a people magnet. And so the 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 first key is how do how are we being seen, and what are the and we have so many opportunities out there within social media and marketing and all, but if we're not being showing up in a way that is relatable to other people that we're wanting to connect with, then they'll walk right by us. Mm -hmm. The second thing is to be safe. I really I believe I'm the only one that teaches around this, and I to be safe is no agenda. I want to know Josh for Josh. I, you know, it is something that allows me to understand who you are without getting information that I can use to close a deal. When I'm really curious about your story, the story beyond the story, you know, it's amazing to me. One of the things in my background in 1988, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Mm. I was told I would be dead or in a wheelchair within 10 years. And I, I, I have gotten so uh, a, a little bit tired of telling that story. But when I'm on stages, that's the story they want to hear because it's an adversity story. It applies to anybody. How did they get from point A to point B, even though there was an obstacle? But the story that you hear from people as being safe, you literally be, do become that people magnet. And number three is the be relevant. And what I mean by that is, do you have something that people need? Is that something something that is desired by the person that you want to serve? And how are you delivering it to them? These three things, I know when you have these in place, you will be successful. It doesn't matter the industry. But what happens is that we get maybe sometimes a little bit uh, anxious because it doesn't happen right away. I don't know what the gestation period, the time when you plant a thought, a seed of what you're wanting and the time that it becomes a result. And like I said, on the, the get statement, you don't have to believe it, but sometimes it happens very quickly because it's right there. You have the, uh, you, you've actually sometimes planted things, 
beyond or before you uh, had something brand new. But the thing that is that it will happen. Uh, it, it's not a Santa Claus type of thing, but it, it can morph, it can change. Uh, and it, that's what makes the, the, the whole process really exciting. And then you guys have Gary, some I, stories. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to share this for inspiration for people, because here's a question I always have asked people, why not you? And I had someone write me a, a note saying that that statement changed her life years ago and to say thank you. So I really want you to think, why not you? And Gary and I, we've worked with some amazing, incredible people. Um, there's actually a single mom of three teenagers with only $300 of bank account. Within 24 months, she was a millionaire. She's actually now retired, right? And um, so Gary, I'll have you talk about some other um, success stories. I can't wait to see your success story up here and what that looks like for anyone listening right now. Well, and this is another individual, a married father of one, and for 10 years built his very successful business for him at $60,000 annual income. Last year, his income was over $550,000. It's thinking beyond the barrier, thinking beyond the obstacle. What is it that you really want? And then looking for those opportunities and uh, options that can get you there. So it, it is uh, a lot of fun to see these people really connect with, you know, the, the outside possibilities that they didn't even know. And here's a single mom of three, annual income of about $70,000. And here's someone that did not believe in get statements. She said, I'm going to prove you wrong. And within 18 months, her annual income was $186,000. And so she's one of the biggest proponents of this now. And so I, I've had people throughout the, the years, I've taught this to thousands and thousands of people. And they go, I, I love the ones that say, I'm going to prove you wrong. I go, please. you know, Because they're going to be the most intense. And then when it happens, they come back and they go, oh, okay. <laughs> and, um, and, and it's not about being right. It's not about an ego thing. But it's really fulfilling to see people really receive the benefits of what they have been working. Like Josh, what you said, they've been working really hard. They've invested time, money, and energy. They're frustrated because they haven't got the return of the investment of that. And they're burnt out. And sometimes it's doing less to receive more, to slow up, to go faster. And to be able to be very deliberate about where you're putting that time, energy, and money to get a desired result. Mm -hmm. and, and the whole mentality is you gotta go to where your clear goal is, right? You got to define that at the end of the day. Um, so to kind of like some of the things that I was getting out of uh, our discussion today really is to a start with clarity, like define what you want. I, and it's funny the you know, what Jessica was saying at the very beginning was like, most people don't know what they want until sometimes they see it. It's hundred percent true. Like, I love the example of like, where are we going out for dinner? You know, like you could sit there and throw out a hundred different places to go out for dinner. You don't know what you want until you hear that option or see that option. But, you know, if you can define what you want and then number two, you know, let's get into vision board let's get into let's write it down and not in a way that just says you know as gary brought up not just saying hey i just want to get rich you know jessica and gary both brought this up that the the person was like you know i just want to get rich and i would like you know a lot of money that's not a very clear goal that's not saying exactly what you were looking for that's just a means to an end that's just a a fluff but to say exactly what you were looking for and what it's going to take to get there is the next part and part of that is seeing it, breathing it, living it every day, writing it down, vision boards, making sure that you're surrounded by this object. Now, something that I was curious that neither of you really touched up on, but I'm just going to I'll bring it in as a fun conversation topic was how about the idea of surrounding yourself with people that are going to push you towards those goals? Is that something that the two of you really see a lot of or is it? No, actually, you could just be so self-motivated. You don't really, whoever, whomever you surround yourself with, they just need to kind of understand that you're going to be trying to achieve this, whether they're going to be backing you up or not. 
I'm glad you brought that up. So Gary and I, I mean, we only have an hour today. When we dive deep with people, that is one of the pieces with that. And really having, again, clarity on those people. And and certain people will work with different areas of our life, right? So my amazing business coach may not be the person to help me, as you mentioned, Josh, to lose weight. So that may be a fitness coach. And it may be different people to encourage you for different um, areas and aspects of your life. And um, I didn't know if anyone had any questions right now, because we're happy to go ahead and answer them. Before we go into, we do want to actually give a good offer for everyone listening today too. So let me back up just something about the, you know, the community that you associate with. When you step out of your comfort zone, normally you're stepping out of the comfort zone of those that you've been associating with. And so sometimes the, the negative naysayers are going to be the people that you thought cared about you the most. And they really do. But what it is, is when you step out of the norm it's saying to them that maybe you left them. I've had people over the years, you left me. And I said, no, you have chosen not to come with me. And so sometimes there is an adjustment with who we listen to, to get the support and then to allow those that don't understand or are not willing to do what we're now willing to do, to be in their spot and to cherish them there. But sometimes we do have to let go of certain people just because they don't understand and it threatens where we're going about them. And so it's not about us. It's truly a reflection of who they are. Absolutely. Thank you. So I know and, you wanted to jump into um, sort of next steps. Mm -hmm. So the next step says Gary and I, we have two masterminds um, for a one month period, and we love to reveal additional questions to ask to dive deeper into that clarity. And then we want to reveal more insider information on how to create your specific get statements custom for each person with that custom plan to easily implement based on the three keys to, to success and actually connect live with Gary and I for a power hour on Zoom. So this is a special offer um, for anyone listening today. I, I'm in a very unique place. I have a wait list for people to work with one-on-one. -on -one. I have a long wait list. Um, so Gary's an amazing coach here as well, but him and I, we are doing this. You know, it is 797, but a guarantee today is just for $67 one time. Use a promo code Shawami. And I mean, right here, you can scan this QR code or here's the link right here to go ahead and learn more about this. Um, you can always connect with Gary or I if you have any additional questions too. But we really want to, you know, help. I believe the right people always show up at the right time in our life. And we want to help good people get what they want. So anyhow, I would love to go ahead and hear um, if there's any questions from anyone right now. And I would love to see people take advantage of this. Uh, this op opportunity right now, as I mentioned, to work with me one-on-one. -on -one, I have a long wait list. And you know, Gary and I, we just want to give back because we love Shawami. We believe in Shawami. I'm a raving fan of Shawami's. And um, anyhow, I probably should have been paid to say that right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyhow, I really, truly am. And I just want to give value to everyone out there. So as I mentioned, if I can do it, you can do it. You know, achieving the icon, owning companies, owning investment properties, happily married, having a child. And sometimes it's not always money. Some people say, Jessica, I just want joy. I just want happiness. And we work with people on that. What would you tell someone who had multiple dreams? How do you determine which should take precedence? Mm. I'll have Gary answer that one. That's a very, I've worked with people on that, but that Gary, I'll have you get started on that. Yeah, you know, my the first question that comes to mind is, are the, the dreams complementary? Or are they in conflict? Uh, because you can work on, like, get statements, what we teach you. You can have eight to ten get statements working at, all at the same time because there's different parts of our lives. We want the mental, physical, uh, spiritual, re family, relationship, business all to be in balance. And so what is it sometimes that, okay, if I say that I want to buy a, uh, a home on the beach, and it's going to be a family re, you know, retreat. Uh, okay, what do I need to have as an income goal to be able to do that? 
So sometimes it's a domino effect. There is a connection to the two, uh, but it is not necessarily a negation of you can only have one. Uh, it really is a blending. Mm -hmm. And I found that people have multiple dreams. They should go after them. Doesn't mean it's going to happen today. You know, it may be five years from now. One may happen next month and another one may be five years from now. Talked earlier, like your dreams change, right? And you could have multiple dreams at one time and aim for all of them and, and sort of adapt as those, as one progresses and then the next progresses and, and continue to make the next dream happen. Yeah, it's a building block. Um, and it's an interesting thing. The more things that come into reality, the more creative at times we get. So we're a little bit braver to explore things that maybe didn't seem even at all attainable in the beginning. Yes. For those with multiple dreams, would you recommend making a vision board of all of them or focus on, let's say, three? Oh, I can tell you mine. Go ahead, Gary. <laughs> well, you know, when you say multiple dreams, are you talking about 20? <laughs> you know, it can be, oh, golly, how do we get everything on there? Uh, I don't know that you can have too many dreams, but the focus dreams, I have what I call my dream journal. And my dream journal are all the things I want to do any time in my life. I come up with an idea. This is what I'm wanting to have. But I synthesize that down to eight to 10 things that I want to achieve in the next 12 to 18 months. And sometimes there's things a little bit beyond that. You can go three to five years. But the, the idea, you want that urgency. And so I'll take that. And when I achieve one of those, then I go back to my dream journal and say, OK, which one do I get to activate now? So it, it is a blending. And so when you write out your get statements, you don't want to write out all your dreams because that'll be overwhelming. When I look at my digital dream big board, I have added all of them there. And as time goes on, I sit with it and some don't sit with me anymore and I just delete them. So writing what you write out is going to be less and what you visualize can be more. Hmm. Well, and the, the get statements, actually, you want to, you know, right now I have nine. And it takes me maybe six minutes a day, maybe, to, to get that accomplished. And I do it at the beginning. Sometimes people say, when do you want to you know, do it in the morning, in the evening? And I, it really doesn't matter. Uh, some people do it morning and evening. I do it in the morning to set my intention for the day. And I only have four. I don't have nine. but <laughs> There is no rule. There's no, no rule, so... Very nice. All right. Uh, closing notes. Do you have any kind of like words of it? Like, uh, you know, something that you want to just kind of put out there, some happy thoughts, motivational things that kind of stuck with you? I know this is like throwing you on the spot. So if you have like a cool quote or something that you kind of think about daily, like, okay, maybe learn one thing every day or improve by 1%, you're going to get there. You know, one of the things that I have somewhat, uh, I shouldn't say somewhat, that I live my life by, it's actually on the placard behind me. And it came from a literal dream that I had about 25 years ago. And it was a question, are you a participant or are you a spectator? It's your choice. We watch the world go, you know, around us at times, but do we choose to get on the merry-go-round? Because the ride is where the excitement is. And um, so that would be mine, Jessica. The one that keeps popping in my head is keep it simple. I believe today we've really overcomplicated things and a lot of people that's messed with their clarity. And I love to work with people on how to just go ahead and keep it simple. So thank you both for joining us today. Thank you everybody for attending. Um, I absolutely, I've got notes that I wrote down, uh, things that I need to be working on, clarity, uh, making sure that I have goals myself. I hope everybody else uh, was kind of in the same boat and was working on the same uh, mentality. Thank you both for joining us. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.